Welcome everyone to the latest installment of uh, DESI's Unite Tutorials. I wanted to kick off this particular video with a special shout out to Jules at Echidna 3D. Um, Jules was very generous um, in explaining some things about how to install and how, how to go about doing this the right way. So I really appreciate the help. Thanks. In this particular tutorial, we're going to discuss how to install um, files and how to reorganize them into your own system so you can find things faster. When I first started with Daz Studio, I started with using the smart content folders. Um, and, and actually, I'll show you where that's at. It's right here. And I continually got frustrated with it because I didn't, I couldn't find a lot of my items, or I would be able to find the main item, but I wouldn't be able to find like the materials for that item. And it was slowing me down considerably. And I had heard that most of the expert DAZ users tend to use the other content library pane right here. And at first I, I kind of shied away from it because it just looked like it might take even longer to find things. And, and that's when I learned a bit more and discovered that I could create my own folder system. And I will start out with a big disclaimer. I kept trying to ask other designers, you know, how do you organize your files? How do you access your assets from Daz Studio? And, and invariably the answer would be do whatever you feel most comfortable with. There's no right or wrong. There's no best way. It's just whatever suits your brain and how you like to think and how you like to access information. So that kind of answer frustrated me because I like to know the right answer all the time. And if there is no right answer and I can just do whatever I want, it's slightly terrifying. And I'll admit, as I started to try and learn how to do this, I made a lot of mistakes and put files in the wrong places and I broke some of my links and then I had to reinstall um, uh, some content. And I also at the same time was attempting to move my entire content library over to um, an external hard drive to free up space on my MacBook Pro. And that's another point I wanted to make. Most of the tutorials that I have seen uh, on YouTube or as an asset in the DAZ store, like a big tutorial, um, they almost always are focused on Windows machines. And I really never found a good one for Mac uh, machines. So this one is gonna focus on that. Um, you'll be able to find Windows tutorials elsewhere. So to begin, um, basically you end up with a file. I mean, your files can end up in a lot of different places. If you're just using the DIM, which is the DAS install manager, I believe it's called, and that is right here. Um, usually when you're installing DAS Studio, you install the actual program. You may or may not install Hexagon on top of that, which is a modeling software. Um, and it'll, you can also choose to install this install manager. And a, a lot of the designers that I've talked to avoid using this um, because, well, I don't know all of their reasons why, but they like to install their files manually. And I'm starting to get the sense of why they do that or why it's more useful to manually install where I want a file to go on my computer. And I'm gonna show you how to manually install. Um, it works for renderosity files and share CD, share CG files um, from other third-party companies. Uh, but I'm just going to show you DAS Studio installation at the, uh, in this particular video. I may do another one that's for installing third party once I get the hang of that, but I haven't really messed with that thus far. So 
One of the problems I ran into with the install manager is that it was dumping my files, installing them into some of them into the DAS Connect area. And I'm not as familiar with DAS Connect as far as I understand it, it's a cloud system. So to reiterate, I was uh, finding that my files were all out of whack and in the wrong places and not where I needed them to be moving forward. So I learned a lot uh, by researching the heck out of this issue. And I discovered that I can change where the install manager installs my files. So I can change the um, that here in the, like if I, if you open up the install manager and let me go over there, you, you normally you'll pop up into this area here and then, um, you'll see ready to download, ready to install installed. And if you pop up here to the gear setting here, um, you'll find that there's an installation tab and here you'll you'll be able to adjust this now i'm just learned about this today so um if i'm missing anything do let me know in the comments section of the video and what i did learn was that what's there originally it'll say something like uh, wherever it installed it in the first place on your hard drive it'll show that that pathway here and the and you'll see that this is grayed out and that you can't actually um, click into it and change it or edit it, edit it, but you can actually add a new one. So that's what you would want to do. You would label um, label it whatever you want. Or actually, I think if you pop in here, it'll actually it'll actually do that for you. Um, let me just check that for a second here. So if I pop over here and this is where I want it to go, yeah, it'll show, it'll, it'll automatically fill that label in. And I guess you could name it something else, but in this case, I want to keep it what it's normally called so I don't get confused. So if you just accept that, um, it'll say, uh, da -da -da. oh, it's, I, it's saying, hey, do you want to do this all over again? And no, this is where I want it. Now, just for your reference, this last C, um, file path is actually just my external hard drive's name. That's what my external hard drive is called. So that's why it's going there. Um, and just, I have like a quick link to it over here, but this is really, you've got, um, my hard drive and then you've got the external drive. And then that's this file or file folder is inside of my hard drive already. So, that was pretty straightforward, I found. I don't know that I have any of these other settings correct at the moment, but um, hopefully that's all good. So that's what I wanted to show you with the DIM. Thank you again for watching, and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any uh, more videos. And thanks again.